We're going to take some time now to talk about the design mode for a body of revolution component and some things to watch out for when we start changing between flow through, upper, and lower design mode. So in flow through mode, it assumes that you want a hollow component where you can flow through it, so it's going to use the entire cross section that you give it and rotate it around. So let's jump to a top view so we can see our first cross section here on the top. We'll go to cross section and we're going to show and that's going to allow us to see this cross section and how it's set up on this other side. Okay, so we already know that cross sections adjust the length of our body of revolution. Now, let's go ahead and leave that alone for now, and we're going to play with some of the parameters here. So in this case, I've chosen a super ellipse in flow through mode where we can adjust, say, the top M and N parameters, and the bottom can be adjusted differently. Okay, so we can set these up and let's give this maybe a little bit different in. So it's using the entire component and then wrapping it around as a body revolution. Okay, now under the design, if we go to upper, notice that because we told it to only use one side of the surface, it knows that it needs to be watertight. So it removed diameter, angle, inlet and exit area. It's assuming that this is no longer a flow through component, it's solid. All right, now if we look, we are using this upper surface right here of this cross section super ellipse. So it's taking this y and x equals zero and the y equals zero, x equals one coordinates and lofting the upper surface only. So think of this as a set of airfoil coordinates and it's just normalizing all of that and setting it up. So we're only getting this upper part of the curve and it's rotated around. If we do lower, it's basically taking the same thing from x equals zero to x equals one and using these lower coordinates and then turning the y values positive so that it can loft it and we go up that direction. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. You can choose which side of this surface that you want to use. But if we think about what it's actually doing, it's trying to use the components from this point to this point. So for these curves, there's kind of a normalized length along this arc length or the section length where you're located in space. So there's the coordinates and then there's how far along the curve you are. So let's see what happens if we go back to our upper design policy, go to our cross section, and now we're going to adjust where the maximum W location or where the leading edge and trailing edge of this airfoil super ellipse shape lie in space. If we bring it up, watch what's happening. We have just made a surface flow through component that has no volume. It's just a flat surface that's being rotated around. So what VSP is doing is it's interpreting that we want from here along this curve and here to what it thinks is the trailing edge of this curve, but we only want this upper surface. Okay. So we accidentally made a flat, hollow surface. And VSP isn't inherently going to be able to do anything with that aside from display it. You can still dump it out as an STL surface and you can bring it into something else if you do want to analyze it, but VSP won't compute this. Now, if we bring that down and make it negative, again, let's view this from the top so we can really see what's going on here. We're using from this leading edge point all the way around to the trailing edge point, and it's revolving that. So this part is still watertight, but we've flipped it inside out on these edges, mm -hmm. okay? So I want you to think of this feature line going through the middle here as that y equals zero coordinate system here in, in the cross section. And what we've done is we've told it that we want some of these negative points. Okay, so when you're using upper and lower design mode in here, make sure that you're using it in such a way that you haven't altered the position of the leading and trailing edge and either turned a component inside out or made it accidentally hollow. Now, there are some ways that you can avoid that and just making sure that you're not moving the W location, that you're using cross sections that are attended design or have upper and lower surfaces that lend themselves to these types of design modes but just be careful when you use it, but using upper or lower is a great way to make an axisymmetric solid body.